Hello and welcome to the first lecture of conditional proof. Now, conditional proof is another, uh, I will say, tool which we use uh, apart from rules of inference and rules of replacement. And uh, it is a very, um, I will say, powerful tool because it helps us uh, solving a lot of questions which are usually uh, difficult, say, if, if, if uh, you have taken the rules of inference, if you have seen a lot of questions on rules of inference or if you have seen a lot of questions on rules of replacement as well. So uh, there those questions can uh, be made a little more simpler using the conditional proof. Now, how this conditional proof is applied? Um, I will discuss but before that let us try to understand that what is the theory like suppose if you like like I may take a question first that uh, a, suppose if a question is given like this like suppose on line number one you are given a bench B uh, implies C dot D okay and then you are given another premise as D bench E implies uh, F and therefore the conclusion is a implies f so suppose if this question is given right so if this question is given to us how to apply conditional proof now <clears throat> first thing first conditional proof is applied on now there are certain conditions which needs to be fulfilled before you can apply conditional proof conditional proof will be applied only when you have a question which is having an implication as the main connective in the conclusion. So, uh, the conclusion must have, the conclusion must have material implication as the main connective. Fine. So, this is the condition which needs to be fulfilled. This is something which you should understand that unless you have in the question an implication in the conclusion you cannot apply conditional proof how to apply and all these things we will be discussing but before that try to understand that you need an implication first thing second thing suppose if there are more than one implication like suppose if the conclusion is uh, a implies b implies c okay so you can apply conditional proof more than once so uh, i will write it down i will explain it with the help of an example like suppose you need to apply conditional proof twice in a question so in fact i will write that uh, conditional proof we call it cp the short form of conditional proof is cp <clears throat> so cp can be applied more than once in the question so this is another point which you need to note before we go on to understand the theory of conditional proof so two things which you should remember first thing is that a conditional proof can be applied only when you have a material implication or implication as the main connective so this is the first thing which you need to remember the second thing is that you can apply like suppose if you have applied conditional proof once then there is a requirement to apply it again you can apply it how to apply these uh, say uh, subsequent time or something is something which we will take with the help of an example now let us start with the example and try to understand that how this question can be done or how it is going to make our lives easier <clears throat> uh, the question was like this right so this this, is, this was the question that a wedge b implies c dot d d wedge e implies f therefore a implies c so this was the question which we need to prove so for proving this question what we will be requiring is that we need to apply conditional proof how to apply conditional proof now it's a very simple step and something very interesting what you will do is that you will take out the <clears throat> like if you remember that in a material implication we call this as the antecedent and this as the consequent so you will take out antecedent as the third or as the next line number like suppose you have two line numbers here in this question you take third line number as this part the antecedent part okay here it is a so you can write therefore f so your question is reformulated you will no more have this question and your question will become like this that your uh, thing is that a wedge b implies c dot d d wedge e implies f a therefore f now what is the uh, 
thing which you will write here, you will write CP. That means the person who is evaluating your, uh, say, proof will understand that you are now applying CP in this question. Now, <clears throat> once you have applied, like, now you cannot apply more because you cannot see that there is more implications in this question, right? But if there are more implications in this question, so you can apply subsequent times. That is what I uh, took as the second condition. Now, you can see that this question has become fairly simple. If you can try it in the original format, the original format in which the question was taken, where you have these two premises and A implies F as the conclusion, you can try that question and see that it will be a little bit difficult or in fact, it can be the case that it is not provable. Something like that can also happen. There are a lot of questions uh, which you cannot prove only using rules of inference or only using rules of inference and rules of replacement. So you will require more uh, strategies. Condition proof is one of them. In the uh, coming lectures, we will be discussing about IP. IP is indirect proof. Then we will be also discussing something which is the uh, edited or the extended version of CP that is called Stungen Conditional Proof, SCP. So we will discuss that as well in the coming lectures and so on. <clears throat> but right now, let us solve. Now, how, how we can solve this? Now you know you can use all the 19 rules. So I will make a wedge B because I want to enter this line. So I will say third addition. Right, so on step number five, I will get C dot B. Fine, so this will be uh, first and third and B. Fine, now I'm doing this question here. So on line number six, what I can do, I can simplify D, and what will be the condition? I have uh, used fifth commutation and then simplification. So I need to commute first and then take out D because I want to enter this line. So on line number seven, I will make it D wedge E. This is uh, six addition, fine. So D wedge E, so I will get F because it will be two seven modus ponens. So now you can see that this question becomes fairly simple once we have applied conditional proof. In fact, any question which you have solved uh, till now, using 19 rules or using 9 rules uh, and so on, you can, if the conclusion is having a implication as the main connective, try to understand, the question should have implication as the main connective. If it is not the main connective, even if it is having an implication, you cannot apply conditional proof. So what you need to remember, you need to remember that you have to um, apply conditional proof only on questions which is having uh, implication as the main connective. So the, this question can be solved like this. And now you can see that this question has become fairly simple. The kind of challenges which it was posing before uh, are no more there, right? Because if you use 19 rules, if you use only rules of inference and rules of replacement, it could have been difficult. But since now you have a new tool that you can apply conditional proof. Now let us try to understand also the theory of conditional proof because this is also something which is going to be important that why we can break the premise like this. Hmm? So this is something which also we need to understand and what is the theory behind or what is the uh, reason that we can apply uh, say conditional proof on these kind of questions is something also which you should know. Let us try to understand it. Like suppose P1 is one premise of a question, P2 is another premise of a question and say for that matter I am taking up to P3. Okay, <clears throat> we know that P1 dot P2 dot P3 implies the conclusion if i am taking conclusion as this is uh, a is is the validity if we check the validity of an argument so we say that this has to be a tautology that means this part has to be a tautology right this is this is something which i have discussed also in a uh, few lectures uh, behind uh, you can check the video as well. <clears throat> I will also put it in the description where I have discussed all these things. In fact, you can go back as well. So this is this is something which is also def the definition of validity we know, right? That the definition of validity says that if we take premise 1 and conjoin it with premise 2 and premise 3, whatever the premises are, there can be a number of premises. That's not going to be a problem. And implies conclusion is a tautology. Now, suppose if I have the conclusion in the form of, say, C1 implies CP, fine. So this will hold as well, that this will be a tautology, right? Now, 
if you see this format it is like suppose if i replace p1 p2 p3 as say r fine i can i can also make it like this mm, so that you can understand the formula suppose all of this has been replaced by me as p suppose okay so p represents p1 dot p2 dot p3 okay implies hmm? then i take c as q and c2 as r do you remember which formula i am talking about right now you know this that this is equivalent to p dot q implies r right this is the formula of exportation right we use exportation or the formula of exportation says that if p implies q implies r then p dot q implies r this is the formula this is the thing which we had discussed uh, in a few lectures uh, back as well that exportation tells us this thing so if you see if i take out this part because this is the conclusion if i take out this and put it over here as a conjunction so this will hold this is logically something which is equivalent to each other but they are material equivalences right because exportation is a rule of replacement and it is a material uh, equivalence right so i can replace th this this as i can replace this as p1 dot p2 dot p3 dot c1 implies c2 right so why because i am using exportation so this is the reason that we can apply uh, conditional proof on questions now let me take another example for you to understand that how conditional proofs can be applied uh, subsequently i will take out this as well so that we can take a question i am going to take questions from your book they, they are uh, pretty simple questions these are also given in your book as well i will take these questions as well uh, only a implies b implies c this is the first premise second b implies c implies d this is the second premise the conclusion says therefore a implies b implies d now you can see that this question the main connective is this implication right so we can apply conditional proof so i will put it as 3 a therefore b implies d fine and i will write the justification that why i am writing like this because i am applying cp now as you can see that even after say uh, taking out a from here i am still finding that the conclusion is a material implication and can further be applied or say the cp can further be applied so what i am doing next line number i will take out again this b and put d now i cannot apply anymore right now i can solve this question so on step number five and, and again i have to write the justification that i have applied cp here again okay now on line number five what i need to do i need to enter this line so i will take a implies b and this line so i will come as b implies c so b implies c will come out so b implies c has come out because of one three material oh sorry more disponents right okay now six i can apply here or i can uh, use b over here so i will get uh, c implies d so this will be uh, two four material uh, again it's more disponents right so b implies c c implies d so what i can get on step number seven it will be b implies d b implies d because uh, this is going to be five six hypothetical syllogism right so this also i can apply and uh, what is the conclusion required d okay so since i have b so i can come out with d so this will be seven four modus ponens so the question is solved so it makes our life easier in fact if we would have applied uh, up to only this uh, i do not know whether we could have solved it a so we could have got b implies c but okay then after that it would have been very difficult for us uh, to come out with a conclusion or something like that
whatever so the whole idea is that it will make your life easier though <clears throat> i must tell you one thing before i leave this uh, section for you because now what you should do is that you should you can take a lot of questions you can take a lot of questions from here and there wherever you will see that the conclusion is having an implication you can apply condition proof and do a lot of practice with a lot of questions and it makes your uh, things simpler but the truth is that there can be some questions and it is the truth i will also solve one of those there are some questions even if you apply condition proof it will not make your life simpler or it will not make uh, the question easier rather it will stay yeah, the question the impact of the question the difficulty level of that question will stay back however the thing which you should understand is that you can apply conditional proof and it will provide you with some solution which usually we do not understand or sometimes it is very very difficult sometimes it is even unsolvable uh, i remember in some of the uh, i remember that in some books of copy it was given before that how there can be a lot of questions which cannot be proved only using 19 rules or rules of replacement up to rules of replacement but they can be solved using cp or they can be solved using ip and so on which we will be discussing in uh, some lectures uh, nowadays i don't think so that that edition is any more available or even if it is uh, available but the new editions do not contain that section so whatever but there can be some questions which are so um, intriguing and so complicated that uh, even after material uh, this conditional proof it is not going to make that question simpler but does not matter you should learn the skill of this uh, technique uh, and you should also practice a lot of questions so that you get well versed with conditional proof thank you